Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone's summer is going well. I've been having a lot of fun with Smogist so far this month. If you haven't checked out my first video yet, I highly recommend that you do. And if you're so inclined, to join us for a month of Dragon Art. There really can never be enough Dragon Art. But I know that most of you are just here for the Pokemon stuff, and, you know, I'm more than happy to oblige. This week, as I said in the last video, we're going to be designing a new Dark-type evolutionary line for the player to encounter in the early part of the game. This trend is less consistent than previous tropes we've discussed in the series, especially since dark types didn't exist until Gen 2, but in a lot of Pokemon games, two-stage dark type or dark hybrid Pokemon can be found somewhat early on by the player. These Pokemon are often used by early game antagonists as well, such as Team Aqua and Magma with their Puchiana, or Team Plasma with their Porloin. The interesting thing about these kinds of Pokemon is that despite being used almost exclusively by villain NPCs, they're usually based off of real-life animals like cats and dogs, pets that have a far better reputation in the real world than they do in Pokemon games. Well, as James Turner said, the key to creating a solid, authentic-looking Pokemon design is to make it look as if it could be your friend. And even if the Pokemon itself is a devil dog with ram horns and a skull for a collar, I guarantee you that there are thousands if not hundreds of thousands of Pokemon fans whose favorite Pokemon is one of these so-called bad guy dark types. Both Canids and Felines are skillful, dangerous predators whose natural body plans lend a lot to a threatening design. And yet, we let them into our homes, our lives, and in my case, our bed. It's therefore easy to design a character with imposing looking features like bared fangs, sharp claws, and bristling fur, and still have it appear friendly, because humans are already so connected with dogs and cats. I want to try to create a Pokemon design based off of some of the creepiest Mexican mythology I could think of, and still have it feel like a big fuzzy buddy that at least some trainers would want to cuddle up with. And because I couldn't decide on which cryptid to base this design off of, I went with two, and created the Maza region's first split evolutionary line. So let's start with the first form, and see how weird we can get with its two separate evolutions. So while I wanted this line to end with two mythical Mexican monsters, I thought I'd keep the first form relatively tame and objectively cute. Thinking along the lines of dogs, I thought that a tiny little Chihuahua Pokemon would be an ideal start for this Dark-type dog line. After all, Chihuahuas, like so many of the Dark-type Pokemon we've referred to so far, strike a good balance between looking cute and having short, nasty tempers. A Pokemon incorporating both of those elements seemed perfect for what I was looking for. To make the concept a little more interesting, I did some light research into the history of the Chihuahua and its influence on Mesoamerican culture. There is historical evidence connecting the modern Chihuahua with a breed of dog called the Techichi, which was popular among the people of the Toltec civilization. I found this really cute sculpture of a Techichi carrying an ear of corn, and I used it as a sort of inspiration for the overall look of my Pokemon. I wanted it to look like something in between a real animal and a painted carving of a real animal, with exaggerated features like giant ears and a bit of a pot belly, and a very expressive face that looked as if it was chiseled on. For the colors, I wanted to emulate the unique and iconic aesthetic of the Hoichel people, whose artwork, both historical and contemporary, utilizes several bright, saturated colors weaved together in symmetrical patterns that are almost hypnotic. I couldn't fully capture the real beauty of what Hoichel art actually looks like in this design, you know, it's just a small taste. Check it out for yourselves though, it's really, really amazing stuff. Techupi, the small dog Pokemon. Almost every family in the Maza region keeps a Techupi, and ancient paintings and sculptures show that this tradition has lasted for centuries. Their personalities vary between individuals, and while some are quiet and relaxed, those who are raised without the proper care can become short-tempered and nasty. Though small, their tiny jaws can clamp down with surprising strength, leading some trainers to resort to using thick leather gloves when training them. Now we'll move on to the pure Dark-type evolution of Techupi. As far as mechanics goes for how this Pokemon will evolve into its two separate forms, I'm not sure at the moment, so let me know if you guys have any ideas. At first, I planned for this evolution to be based off of the iconic Zolo dog, which has a lot of mythology surrounding it, but I couldn't come up with a design that looked mythical enough. Instead, this evolution is going to be based off of, you guessed it, the famous Chupacabra, Mexico's most well-known cryptid. A ton of you suggested that I base a Dark-type Pokemon off of the Chupacabra, so I'm assuming most of you already know what it is. But for those of you who aren't familiar, the Chupacabra is a supposedly mythical species of creature that haunts the suburban and rural areas of Mexico, America, Puerto Rico, and even Russia. 
and specializes in draining the blood out of its favorite prey, sheep and goats. Its name literally translates to goat sucker in English, and it got its name after farmers found their stock inexplicably, well, malnourished. Reports claim that the chupacabra doesn't just drink blood, it drinks all of the blood, leaving its victims nothing but skin and bone. So that's what I wanted to make into a Pokemon that could still look like it would be your friend. But I mean, I know for a fact that there are some edgy kids out there who would love to have a blood-sucking wolf bat as their right-hand man. And even if I made this thing look like a Disney villain, which it kinda does, it would still attract players of all ages. I also took some inspiration from the South American maned wolf to broaden my points of reference. Now, of course, the actual blood draining part of the Chupacabra's mythology was going to be played down a little bit, and really only hinted at. I gave it some nice long fangs to imply its blood sucking nature, and some wicked looking claws that are perfect for, um, scratching backs. Like a lot of Pokemon, the actual design is a lot darker than you might guess when looking at it at first glance, but I think that's what I love about an idea like this. Kind of like Noctavispa, but, you know, actually maybe even less sinister. Lupacabra, the mange dog Pokemon. Terrible rumors have been spread that Lupacabra feeds on the blood of both Pokemon and people, but this has never been proven to be true. The Pokemon has earned an unjustified reputation as a dangerous monster, but they can be trained and are very loyal to trainers who show them care. In battle, they will go into a wild frenzy, clawing and biting at their opponent, sometimes without ever landing a hit. And now the final Pokemon of this video and the alternative evolution of Techupi, based off of a lesser known Mesoamerican cryptid. While usually less canine in appearance when compared to the reported sightings of the Chupacabra, the Ahoizotl is sometimes described as being somewhat dog-like, though it possesses many other distinctive features as well. For those of you unfamiliar with this creature, like I was a week ago, the Ahoizotl is a mythological beast from Aztec mythology, described as about the size of a dog with the body of a monkey and a large hand at the end of its tail. You know, when I learned about this creature, I realized that it's very likely that this was part of the inspiration for Apom, but I wasn't going to go in a cute direction with my design. I still wanted it to feel mostly dog-like to connect it with the first form, but Ahoizotl is a water-based being, a guardian of fish and, allegedly, a killer of men in the form of dragging them into deep underwater caves using the hand on their tails. But again, we're gonna skip past the murdering for our children's video game character design and focus more on the whimsical side of this fictional creature. Obviously, we needed to keep the hand on the tail as it is arguably the Ahoizotl's most iconic feature. I wanted the face to look somewhat similar to that of Lupacabra, but broader and more pig-like to give them a nice distinguished feeling and change up the personality a little bit. I also wanted it to be mainly quadrupedal, again to distinguish it from the other evolutionary form. And of course, Connecting the design to the original mythical creature, I wanted to make it a hybrid water and dark type, so I included a blue-green that was completely unique to this form. I also used a pinker red as opposed to the colors of Luchacabra or Techupi. Zolupine, the Aquadog Pokemon. One of the rarest Pokemon in the Maza region, Zolupine makes its homes in the vast underwater tunnels and caves that run beneath the surface of the jungle. Only emerging every so often for food, they tend to explore land mainly at night, searching for prey with their extraordinary sense of smell. The large hand on its tail can be used for swimming, climbing, or in battle, and delivers a powerful blow that can splinter trees. So there they are, the second, third, and fourth dark types of the Maza region. We actually have a lot already, I'm not even sure we need more. There aren't a lot of dark types in general, I, I'm sure there's a good reason for it, I, I don't know what it is. Probably something to do with balancing. I don't know. But anyway, let me know which of these evolutions you would evolve your Techupi into. I really can't decide. I like them both. Next up, I think we need some poison types and maybe a design without an evolutionary line? Let me know if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.